city. Uh, but then after that, I want us to do a family photo, okay? And then, the wonderful photo for us best. Thank you for looking at the present. Thank you. 
in England, it's a 60, when they, when they put that on, it's a 60% reduction of fatalities if there's a safe time. So, lots to do, and uh, us cyclists, healthy, good for the environment, strong, smart. <laughs> Huh? And we save money, of yeah. course. Yeah. So keep riding. Thank you for coming out. The sun came out for you. Yeah. Back to you. Thank you for taking the video. We all just take a free drop pause for the thank you.
this is we're going to give you a bit of a thumbnail sketch of bill 40 for those who don't know about it for those who do apologies for repetition um, and then we are going to pass the mic and it's your opportunity to just step into the middle of the circle and speak what your heart believes to be true about safety in our communities vulnerable road users and what people in this building uh, can do to make sure that our communities are safe okay does that make sense so, uh, beginning on a note of gratitude, which one has to do, um, I want to thank Allison, I want to thank all of you beautiful orange vested people, thank you for keeping us safe on the way here. Uh, I want to in particular thank the crew I'm, I'm very privileged to work with in Ottawa Centre, so Erica, Ethan, Sharon, Ty back home, thank you very much for helping John and me, John's here somewhere. John and I, there's John, we wrote from Ottawa, it's John and I, so thank you very much for helping us get So, Bill 40 is not a new bill, Jess Bell, who I think is here somewhere, not, anyway, Jess was the last MPP to introduce this bill into this place. It's been kicking around this building for 10 years, and what it does is specify who vulnerable road users are, and there's four categories now. And it tries to say if a driver is responsible, because this is what the evidence is showing us, for critically injuring or even in some cases taking someone's life because of a, a collision, there are consequences for that. Mandatory, what Bill 40 specifies, is a one year license suspension. We have a case right now in Ottawa where a 14 year old has a permanent brain injury from a collision. And the only reason the judge in the sentencing ruling was able to provide a one-year license suspension was because, as the uh, Justice of Peace, pardon me, said in the ruling, the person who caused the accident fled the scene. 
And in the ruling, and this has happened in ruling after ruling after ruling, and folks here with more experience than me know this, the courts are telling us, the justice of the pieces are telling us we need to make sure there actually are restorative justice principles and consequences. So, uh, Serene Armstrong, that 14-year-old, can't be here from Ottawa. But she wanted me to tell you that this is the kind of thing she wants to see. She wants that one-year suspension. She wants a real consequence, not just for her because the driver fled, but because that is something that will be out there and will remind people that a consequence truly exists. There are three further things, and I'll try to make this brief. First, the driver responsible for perpetrating the incident has to have retraining, approved by officially regulated bodies, like the CAA. We can sort out who and regulate, but that's required. The person responsible for the incident also has to, as part of their parole order, perform community service in the domain of road safety. How many people in your neighborhood need more crossing guards near schools and There are lots of ways in which folks could use what I have seen in many cases, considerable remorse and anguish, not in every case, I'm looking at just speaker here, right? But that remorse can be put to work to become better humans behind the wheel. So that community service is important. And last but not least, it will be mandatory if Bill 40 becomes law that someone who caused caused violence in our street with their vehicle has to be present at the sentencing hearing personally, not through a designate, but personally, to hear the victim impact statement of the person who was hurt, or if sadly they're deceased, their loved one. In five jurisdictions in the United States, these rules have dramatically changed driver behavior for the better. And one of the organizations that contacted me as we've been getting together the promotional work for this was Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And what Matt told me was, Joel, this is, this is where we were a long time ago. But education around intoxication and driving a vehicle has gotten to a point where people are aware and it's been in the schools and keep, the words that I heard were keep pushing the public education, keep pushing this issue. So I want, before passing the mic, I want to acknowledge that Bill 40 is not a silver bullet. There's a lot that we can't do because we're opposition members of the legislature. And we can't ask the government to spend money on things like safe, segregated, multi-use paths. If I'm a member of a government one day, and we can push spending to municipalities in that direction. That is precisely what I'd love to be part of. But what Bill 40 does is change the Highway Traffic Act to encourage and impress upon drivers that they have, it's, they have a responsibility to drive safely. What I've also heard from people in Ottawa, Kingston, Brighton, Oshawa, Scarborough, and I expect to hear now, is we all have a responsibility to keep each other safe. I heard a plaintiff appeal from a dump truck driver who wanted me to know about the blind spot and how he felt it was weird that on a construction site there's a flag person following him around everywhere to make sure people around the vehicle are safe. The moment he leaves the construction site, that help isn't there. That help is not there. So what we want to try to do with this bill is bring people together because there's a lot of people out there who push the agenda of safety who are trying to pit people against each other. You certainly saw it in the last mayoral election in the city. We've seen it in our community in Ottawa. I'm sure it happens everywhere you are. So that is my attempt. And I think we have some flyers looking at members of my team. There we go. So grab a flyer. Erica's got, got some there. If you want to find a little bit more about the bill, a summary of it is there. Uh, Sharon's got some as well. But now I'm passing the mic. Please step into the circle. Uh, and as you do, consider one thing. Would you like to be part of the report we are preparing from the safety ride we've done from Ottawa to Toronto? We are hoping that we have. We've been blessed with wonderful, powerful, in some cases sad and tragic stories um, that people have shared with us. And we believe this is motivational power to get people in this building to make road safety a priority. Finally, finally. So if you're in that boat, you say, yes, Joel, I'm down. 
if it's critical of the legislation, if it's supportive, if you have ideas we don't cover, if you think we're doing something right, we want to hear it all. We want it to be reflected in the report. And if you're willing to put your face and your name to it, thank you in advance. Um, so a facilitation technique I've been using along the way is, uh, who would like to speak second? <laughs> Any volunteers, but who would like to speak second? All right, you like to speak second. Uh, would anybody like to kick us off? Now knowing that somebody is already volunteering. Come on up, please. Hi, I'm Ben. I support this bill, but I think we should go further and, and ban cars. They're terrible. They kill people, they kill our environment, and they make us all miserable. And they only benefit corporations, not humans. So this is a start, but let's go all the way and, and ban cars. Thank you. I saw Ben keeping people safe on that ride too, so thank you for that too, Ben. <laughs> hey, my name is uh, Barry. Uh, I cycle every day in Toronto, and luckily I, I have not had a major incident. Uh, I don't think, uh, you know, I've had the luxury of having a lot of group ride experience, so I know, I think, how to keep myself safe. But having said that, you know, hearing the stories you're here today, and I've been on lots of group rides where people talk about having by cars uh, toward uh, even running stop signs, going to court, watching people walk away with no consequences. It amazes me that these are public spaces that we're talking about. These are public roads. There is no expectation of privacy here. You do not get to blindly drive 200 kilometers an hour down the road and think that, well, nobody saw me, so I didn't cause any problems. It's a culture that I think uh, this is a start of just recognizing that there are consequences for sure, but you're in a public space. Uh, I don't know if we would be in cars, but certainly, uh, you know, your picture is taken when you're going on the uh, seven of drive, which is one of them. It takes a picture of you when you're driving, but it, it's like that's a private road. But there are cameras everywhere. There are things monitoring our speed everywhere. But you have to get behind that wheel and know that there are consequences to driving so safe. Thank you, Joel. Um, my name is Mark with Community Bikeways Toronto. It's been a saving, it's been a saving grace for me personally. Um, I just want to say I, I studied political science. I love political science. And we're here at Queen's Park, and there, I have not been on a group ride with this many politicians before. Uh, I, I have a lot of faith and hope, and hope this gets uh, passed. Thank, thanks for riding. on the border to Quebec, I can completely agree. I'm Joey with Advocacy for Respect for Cycles. I've been involved with the Toronto Road Users Bill since uh, Sherry DeNovo introduced it uh, eight years ago, back in 2015. And all I can say is we need it more than ever, um, especially not so much in Toronto these days. Thankfully, we're not putting up too many ghost bikes, but we've been putting a hell of a lot of them in Burlington, Mississauga, and all the other suburbs around Toronto. So hopefully, with this bill, these drivers, when they are caught, will face some consequences and, in particular, deal with the community, have to be in the community, and 
that Joel mentioned actually attend the victim uh, impact statement instead of just waiting at home and having their lawyer or representative in, um, in court. So thank you so much, Joel. Thank you. 
our individuals, our community members with limited mobility issues to be able to ride a bike safely in every community. And it's not just the physical end, it's the mental end. We need dedicated bike lanes. We got to catch up. Thank you. temperature check. First of all, thank you very much for coming. Second of all, who's motivated past this damn thing? I can't hear you. Who's motivated past this thing? All right. Uh, who has not signed our petition yet? 
Oh wow, that's fantastic. This is the engine. The cool kit. Um, there we go, thank you. Um, so, oh, sorry. So, to Allison's question uh, about not signing the paper version, the distinction here, which is a tad embarrassing as a provincial politician, is the only way we can introduce a petition into this building is with paper. But the online petitions, putting on my community organizer hat, are critically important because it's all about building a list. And the good thing about this safety ride is that we now have a list that includes people in Brighton that includes people in, well, we already knew the lovely people in Scarborough, I mean, come on. New people we met in Oshawa, people we met in Kingston for the first time, including three city councillors who helped us build a terrific event. The list is getting bigger, but we all have lists, right? Yeah. Who's building a community organizing list around this circle? You all have lists. So from now until November 22nd, we wanna work with you. People need to know that this is a real opportunity uh, and we want to be getting into new places and spaces. We did this on purpose time with the reopening of this legislature to put this on the government's agenda. Having Olivia with us today was fantastic because that helps us access an even broader audience because we know that she is an ally. But we need to find other allies and sometimes, it's gonna be weird, you're gonna be surprised where they come from. And that's okay because that's life, right? We, who's in this to win? Who does not want to be in a rally next year talking about how we're working on Bill 42, which is the same damn thing? Okay, so the next month, I know you're all busy troublemakers, I know, and thank you for that. But I, it would be wonderful if we could borrow a bit of your time over the next month. We convene organizing meetings, uh, we are going to keep convening those. And Allison, is there something you wanted to add on this one? I can see. You. So but between now and November 22nd, we have uh, the secular holiday Halloween is fast approaching on October 31st. Aside from being the funnest uh, holiday of the year, it's also the most dangerous and deadliest night of the year for people who walk, bike, etc. So one of the things we're doing is we are organizing a fun, peaceful protest to attract everyone to demonstrate and help the mayor, her executive and city councillors that they must figure out the, the lack of construction safety across the city. So if anybody wants to get involved, there's already, we're looking for uh, multimodal theater leaders uh, because it's gonna be coming in from across the city. Joey Schwartz, Robin, Lanrick, Jess, a whole bunch of people. But if anyone wants to get involved and on my list for this, please see me. Look, we're doing this together. Let's promote each other's events, right? Let's promote the goal of getting this damn thing passed. And all of us have networks into spaces that we have to go into, all right? Whether it's Halton Hills, whether it's Kingston or Ottawa, uh, Ottawa or Brighton or wherever, right? This is a big, big, big problem. And hey, if we gotta do another safety ride from Windsor to Toronto, or if we gotta do one from North Bay to Toronto, if we just gotta do smaller ones in communities that are already existing, uh, I happen to have some good news. The leader of the opposition has come. You're a very busy person, Mark. Please come here. Mark, tell us, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. I literally, like, I just came down here to <laughs> welcome Joel and congratulate everybody on the big ride. Uh, oh, I don't know if this is working. It's working. It's, it's working. working. Uh, anyways, everyone, uh, Joel, how'd it go? All right, yeah, and uh, we've been really excited about the work Joel's doing and everybody and I want you to know you of course have uh, allies in us here at Queen's Park and the official opposition. We're heading back in tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna call this government to hold this government to account. Uh, we're gonna try to do some good things at the same time. Actually get some work done. You know, make life better for people right. and make life safer for people as well.
All right, folks. So this is a, this is a wrap, but also the opportunity. We have been recording this, so we'll have a transcript from this. All right. If you want to put yourself forward, some of you already have, and thank you for doing so, to be uh, actual on the record with your face, with your story, or, or off the record, whatever you prefer. We want to give the government of Ontario a report. We want to give it to every other caucus of this legislature. Uh, this is what we heard on the safety ride. This is why we want you to prioritize Bill 40. And we will not stop until this damn thing is passed. I promise you that. Okay? So if you're one of those people willing to be on the record, please put your hand up. Our friends Ethan or Sharon will come and find you. As Mark just said, please get home safely today. And for those of you, again, the orange vest folks who helped us get here safely, thank yeah. you. I wanted to thank MPC Hardin for the millions of pedal strokes he put in getting this bill here and working it closer to the finish line. I cannot think of another politician who has literally put their life on the line like this to get important legislation passed. I've never seen such an expression, physical expression of commitment and willingness to help people and victims like the group I represent and it is amazing so we can have a huge round of applause for MPC Hardin. Thank you Jess, I was just only encouraged, I like Joel. <laughs> I like Joel and my friend John Perkis over there, I gotta say, we had this one stretch from Ottawa to Kingston where John could see my energy level falling through the floor and he threw a granola bar at me and some of the original ones. I'm here. So thank you, John, for doing the ride. I am a wood carver. And when I heard about this uh, bicycle ride safety going on, for safety going on, I thought there's one symbol that basically should be on Joel's desk at the legislature. A heart. It represents two things. One of them is Joel's heart and passion for this subject, how much he cares about people, no matter what they are like. And it's really important to have passion about the issue. The second thing is, Bill 40 is intended to save lives. So this heart represents every heartbeat that will continue because a vulnerable road user's bill is in place and people are safe. So thank you. I'm making me cry. That's okay. Thank you. I'm going to cherish this baby. Thank you. John, it's mine. I'm sorry. All right. So, again, thank you to the conveners for today. Um, this is a wrap for this exact moment, but it is not a wrap because we're going to get this thing over the finish line, right? Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thanks again. Uh, thank you for coming. Let's socialize and mingle because that's often where the best trouble making happens. Okay? With the pooches, with the people. All right. But get home to your loved ones safely and be well. Tomorrow's going to be an interesting day at this place, I guarantee you that. Take care, everybody. Be well. Thanks.